Hi, Bill Felber again with CZAD at the 8th International Conference on Emerging Zoonoses. I'm speaking here with Dr. Garth Ehrlich. He is Executive Director of the Center for Advanced Microbial Processing in the Center for Genomic Sciences, both within the Institute for Molecular Medicine and Infectious Disease at Drexel University. He also serves as Executive Director of the Genomics Core Facility, which is part of the Clinical and Translational Research Institute. We're visiting with Dr. Ehrlich about the challenges related to communicating science to non-scientists. Well, Dr. Ehrlich, that's a pretty significant issue because of the necessity of communication. Scientists often deal in complex subjects, and they frequently do so in language that sounds foreign to those of us who are not scientists, and that runs the risk of undermining even their valid points. How can scientists communicate more effectively with the general population? I think the most important thing is to be genuine and to make, sh make the people you're communicating with really understand that you care about their understanding and want them to learn. I think most people, if given the opportunity, are happy to learn. And so it's like any sort of teaching. What you have to do is put things in terms that people can understand. And <clears throat> You can almost always find simpler terms than the technical terms and the jargon that we use. We use this jargon, it's mostly a shorthand, it allows us to communicate more rapidly with our colleagues, but we don't have to use that, that jargon. Very few things that we do can't be explained through the use of simpler terms or analogies that people come across in their everyday life. So I you know, would urge you know, scientists who are interested in this to actually work on their communication, work on speaking you know, to groups and individuals who don't know science. Because I have found that when I'm sitting on an airplane or traveling someplace and somebody asks what I do and I say I'm a scientist, very often they become very animated and very interested and they want to learn. Um, and so they ask what I do. And I usually find I can communicate with almost anybody about, about what I'm doing. Maybe not the details, but that's not what's important. It's important is to tell you know, the story of what you're doing and why it's important. Uh, I was a journalist for 44 years. Journalists could serve as effective intermediaries, but I know from experience that few journalists have science backgrounds. Should scientists be more active in promoting the study of science journalism? And if so, how could they do that? I think that it's actually key I think that you know that there should be a an effort at most major scientific meetings, you know, and at most universities to educate journalists. Whether you bring them in for an hour or for a half a day or a day for a workshop, and talk to them and teach them about science reporting. I think the best way to do that is to have a, a mixed group of you know professionals who are talking to them, which actually would mostly um, include professional science journalists. There are professional science journalists. Um, and to try to enlist them, you know, in trying to bring along their peers, even if they're not going to be full-time science journalists, as to how you approach this type, type of an issue. So what I do, if I'm contacted by um, one of the local news stations, whether it's a newspaper or it's a television station, and they're asking, you know, if I'd be willing to talk about a subject, I always say I would, but I always tell the reporters when they get there, you know, that I'm going to sit down and I'm going to explain to them in quite a bit more detail what I'm talking about than I'm actually going to say when we're recording, so that they have, you know, more of a background because they are taking on the role, you know, of educating. And it also helps them to formulate their questions going forward. Well, Dr. Ehrlich, I really appreciate you taking the time with us. Um, again, this is Bill Felber at the 8th International Conference on Emerging Zoonoses. Thank you for watching.